All right, so I know that people are concerned about potentially coming across as overly desperate, overly needy, and we don't want to send that vibe when it comes to connecting with our partner, our ex, or anyone else for that matter. So what are some things that you may unintentionally be doing that actually creep your ex out? That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video, and please stay tuned through to the end because we're going to be talking about this, and more importantly, what you can do to help make that great connection that you want with your ex. Hey there, it's Clay with modernlove.life. Now you wanna be careful when it comes to interacting with your ex, especially if you haven't done a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about on other videos. You may potentially run a very big risk of creeping your ex out if you let certain things slip if you let certain things sort of shine through the cracks, uh, can come across in a bad way that actually damages the connection and makes you have more work on your hands as we move forward here. So we have to be really careful about this, but if we were to look beneath the surface of all of this, there's really one fundamental common denominator. And if we just sort of go right for that and resolve that, then all of the other symptoms of uh, being creepy can uh, be resolved instantaneously. So rather than just giving you like, you know, don't do this, do that, don't do that, do, don't, don't do that, never do this, don't never say that, I'm gonna go re directly for the root of the problem. I hope that's okay with you. Um, now, of course, we're not talking about, you know, obvious things that are gonna creep them out, like stalking them or driving by their house or, you know, waiting for them in the parking lot outside of their work or something. Like, I, I hope that most of you know that that's not the ideal thing to do. And if you are doing that or do feel the urge to do that, please don't do that. What does creep them out is um, actually something that motivates a lot of these kinds of behaviors. It's something that triggers a lot of concern on their part. Before we go ahead and get into that, if you do like these videos that we do, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And make sure you also hit that notification bell as well too. It does help me out a lot when you do hit that notification bell. And just drop a comment down below if your ex has felt creeped out by you or you believe they felt creeped out by you. Um, what is it you think has caused that to happen? What do you think you did? And does it relate to what we're about to talk about right here? So the big thing that's at the root of this whole creepy thing is when you have an over-attachment to outcome that's not aligned with where they are at emotionally. And for a lot of people, this is going to come across as being relationship focused. Okay, now I understand that a lot of people, you know, if you're going through a breakup that you don't want, um, you may want to save that relationship. And you're thinking, okay, how do I, you know, save my relationship or save my marriage? How do I repair things here, right? You're probably on some level going to be thinking about, um, you know, getting that relationship back. I understand that. However, um, that's not where they're at emotionally. And, you know, I think in a lot of ways, most people probably have the understanding that on a first date with someone that you've you know never been in a relationship with just first date you know you met someone somewhere somehow and you're going on on a first date you know you don't want to come across as too attached to being in the relationship you don't want to say okay great so when are we getting married what are our kids names going to be uh, you know are we going to spend thanksgivings and christmases at at my parents house or your parents like that's going to come across as creepy on date number one because there's this big disconnect between where you are and where they are. What we wanna do is recognize when there's this big disconnect um, after a breakup as well too. You know, you may want to save the relationship, you may want to save your marriage, you may want to do all those sorts of things, but if they're not there yet, if they're down here, then it's gonna come across as over-invested, over-attached to outcome, and a lot of the things that you do may come across as creepy. That's why a lot of the things that people do in damage control mode immediately after the breakup, such as begging and pleading, promising they're going to change, buying expensive gifts, making grand romantic gestures, etc., cetera, um, often don't work out because there's that big disconnect between where you are and where they are. And so what we need to do is we need to actually meet them at the emotional place that they're at and then slowly build up that emotional connection to the point where both of you can be in this highly invested place. And then it makes sense to talk about 
connection and commitment and, uh, you know, getting back together and the relationship and all of this sort of stuff. But if they're still down here and they don't feel a lot of emotional connection for you, then you're going to have a really hard time uh, if you're up here trying to force the relationship to happen, trying to watch everything that they're doing to see if it looks like it's heading towards the relationship or not, or seeing if they, um, you know, uh, uh, want to get back together right now or not. They're probably not there yet, depending on where you are with your ex and what's happening and all that with your situation. You know, they're, they're, they're often not there yet until you build up that emotional connection. What we really want to do is build up that emotional connection. What we really want to do is to, um, help them on this emotional journey to get back together with you. And if you want to learn how to do that, we do talk about that inside of our course called the X Solution Program um, over at modernlove.life slash ESP. There's also going to be a link for it down below in the description box for this video. Um, and you know, if you're curious, go ahead and check it out. If it seems like it's a good fit for you and where you're at and how your situation seems to be unfolding, then we'd love to have you in it. What we do is we focus in on building that emotional connection and helping guide your ex through the emotional struggles that they're probably going to be going through um, in this process of reconciliation. You know, it's probably not going to be an easy straight shot of just, you know, have a couple conversations or something and boom, you're back together. It's probably going to be more a process of them learning to trust themselves, them learning to trust you and them learning to trust the dynamic between the two of you before they emotionally feel ready to recommit to you. And um, if you're not prepared to deal with their sort of fluctuating, confused emotions through this, you could be in for a very difficult ride. So check out um, the X Solution program over at modernlove.life slash ESP. And if it sounds like it's a good fit for you, we'd love to have you with us. If it's not right for you, that's 100% okay. Obviously, I can't reach through the computer or your phone or anything like that and twist your arm into like <laughs> signing up for something you don't want to do. But, um, you know, if it does sound like the right thing for you, we'd love to have you with us. Anyway, with that being said, once again, thank you so much. Take care, and I'll talk to you next time.